So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is actually add a camera in here. And there's two different kinds of cameras in Unreal Engine. And normally when you set your shot up, you use a cinematic camera actor. Whereas when we're setting up this um, camera projection, we're going to use just a regular standard camera. So I'm going to pull that in to the scene. And the first thing I want to do is line it up with my original shot. I want my rotation, everything to be the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on my original camera. The other thing that you want to do before you start doing any of this is right click on your camera actor <coughs> for the shot and make sure that lock actor movement is on. This is going to be really important because if you move this camera, uh, you're not going to be happy camper. Or you, if it's animated, you want to know exactly what it's seeing through the shots. So you're going to select that camera from your shot, right click, copy your location, paste that onto your new camera. Now you can see they're exactly in the same place, but the rotation is different. So I'm going to click on my shot camera again, right click, get my rotation. Now they're in exactly the same place. The other thing you want to do is right click edit and rename. So this is going to be camera actor projection three because you don't want to lose track of which one is which. And especially if they're starting right on top of each other, uh, you don't want to mess that up. Plus it's good just to stay organized. I've already got two in there that I started, so that's why I'm starting with three. And then you want to come down and go to projection mode and make that orthographic. That'll make sense in a minute. Now, <clears throat> in this perspective view, I'm going to go down and look through that. And you can see that what I'm seeing in my shot view here on the right and what I'm seeing in my new camera projection is not right. So we're going to go down and go to the ortho width and start to adjust that so that we can see, start to see some of the same elements that are in there. But because it's uh, orthographic, uh, obviously it's not going to be exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to move this around this um, this camera so that I can uh, oops I have to go in here get out of there select my camera because we want to cover as much of the area that we can and paint on that so this and then I'm going to move this and actually rotate it a little bit down. Now, right now, my rotation is in world view, and I want it to be in camera view. So I'm going to click this little world view icon here, and I'm going to move this a bit, and then I'm going to move it up as well so I can see it in the sky. So you're noticing, notice that it clips, right? And sometimes you may have to set your clipping planes so that you can see more or less of what it is that you need to cover. The reason that we're using this ortho cam is because the way that we're projecting it onto our geometry is, um, is through a decal, which actually isn't in perspective, it's just planar. I wanna get a little bit of these towers, this corner, the doorway, but right now notice that when I'm projecting, I'm not getting all the door here so i want to make sure that this fence isn't covering that up so that looks about right because i've got this window the bottom of the building the corner of the building and the doorway well so that looks like it's in a pretty good place and i'm going to check that with my shot view just to make sure i've got everything in there that i want Perfect. Okay, now what we need to do is go back to our 
projection camera. And you'll notice that it's rectangular right now. And because we're going to be projecting a texture, it's best just to keep the aspect ratio at one. That way it'll be um, consistent all the way across. And we, we know that we'll, we're getting as close as we can to like one to one pixel. So when we paint a pixel, we know where it's going. So the next thing we need to do is create a decal. So it's going to create this decal actor. Uh, and or again, what we're going to do is go grab the coordinates of where it is and then paste it on our decal. Now you have to adjust the rotation, but we want to get it generally rotated in the same way. So we're going to copy the rotation and then paste it onto our decal. Now that that's in the same place, uh, I'm going to cut, it's already called decal actor three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that onto my projection three camera. So now if I do move this around, that decal is going to go with it. But since we already have what we're looking at is covered, I'm going to go ahead and lock this camera off too. This is really important. Because if it moves, then uh, again, your painting is going to be all messed up. So we have our decal actor in the same place as our camera, but it, we don't really know exactly where it is yet. So we're going to make a quick material. We'll call this um, test pattern. Material. Double click that. <clears throat> I've already got my handy dandy UV cam projection texture in here. Something like this so that you can see what the orientation is and then also um, what the, if, if it's, you know, if it flips uh, horizontally or vertically, that's not going to be good. So we're going to plug that into the base color. We have to select our material test pattern and then set this material domain to deferred decal. That way it'll work when we pull it into our decal. And we want to set the blend mode to translucent, even though it's not a big deal right now. But if you don't, it doesn't actually plug the base color in. It doesn't know what to do, even though we're not using opacity right now. So we'll save that. Then we'll select our decal, pull that into the decal material, and start to adjust our decal so that it fits our camera. So right now, again, I'm going to move this and notice that I am still in local object mode. If I switch this back to world mode, that's going to be bad because we want to stay aligned to the camera. So I'm going to switch that back to local mode and start to move it out into my environment. And you can see now it's starting to show up, but it's way too small. Again, if I look back through my camera projection, it's like, well, that doesn't cover. That's not going to work. So what we have to do. And the other thing is, is that it's rotated 90 degrees in the wrong direction. So I'm going to rotate this, make sure that your um, rotation snapping is on. And I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. You also want to make sure that you're again on in rotating it in local space and not in world space. So now I can start, start to adjust. Note, the other thing is, you see that it's exactly in the center of my camera. That's because I just moved it straight out from the camera. 
So now I'm going to start to adjust the size. And I've got my lock turned on so that if I drag and pull the scale here, it's going to start to get bigger. And we can see this little green square that is taking up the um, entire field of view of the camera. And we want to adjust this so that that green decal is exactly the same size as our camera. So I'm going to get it as close as I can by dragging it, but I can't quite get it. So I'm going to say 2091. We can still see it, um, but we want it to be as close to that edge as possible. So the, now what we need to do is adjust what it's actually, notice that it's not quite deep enough. It's I want some of this second building to be uh, paintable as well. So I'm going to turn the lock off and just make the decal deeper until the painting actually hits that second building. So you can see now right around C8, I have the ability to paint on that as well. So that's how you set up the camera and the decal. Next, we'll be going into how to grab the images and uh, get started painting.